day to rock and roll. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again. Wow, what a day we've had and what a week. It's been excellent. But today we want to talk again about how to win with the market makers. We don't want to fight them. If you can't beat them, join them, right? I mean, my God, why would we fight them? They're the rulers. And like we talked about in the very last, um, you know, the very, the very last teaching on this subject, which uh, a lot of people have said that was a real eye opener. Uh, I'm glad, and I hope this one's going to be a real eye-opener, too. Okay, so let's get going. And let me just check really quick. Um, Stuart, okay, I'm just going to move this go-to meeting up above in case I need to see what you guys are saying. I'm going to do the same thing with Skype in case uh, anybody has any questions. You, you know, feel free to ask them, but try and hold them to the end if you can. All right, so how to win with the market makers. We win by joining them. So we have to understand their game. We have to understand their goals. Uh, they do attempt very hard to paint a picture to us. They want to induce us and, and all traders, not just you and me, but every trader everywhere. They want our accounts. So they're trying to induce us to take positions. Our money that is in our account is of no use to the market makers until we trade it and they want to take it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. They are evil, vicious wolves. They love to create fear, they love to create panic, especially at news time, and they want people to think wrong and do stupid things. They want you to be emotional. All right, so the stupid things can involve like spikes or stop runs or very wild or weird candles. And you will very often see that at news time. And if you've ever traded non-farms payroll, you know what it looks like then too strange whip saws and weird candles and you know that's why a lot of people just stay out they don't want to trade it because they're you know they're scared so I understand that so if you get really weird spikes and stop runs wild and weird candles whip saws during news strange price behavior uh, a lot of people have trouble grasping it especially when for instance it's a buy the rumor and sell the news event like a bullish report comes out and you're thinking that one currency is going to go up, up and away, but you know, hey, it already did go up, up and away for like five days. And then it starts to break out on the news, right? It just goes up, up and away for like 15 minutes and then slams down and makes the biggest hourly sell you've ever seen. And you're sitting there going, why? That news was so bullish for currency XYZ. It should be rocking. And no, it's, it's oftentimes it's just buy the rumor and sell the news and they'll reverse it. And, and that makes a lot of people that don't understand, especially newbies, you know, newbies flow into this market all the time. They don't know what they're doing and uh, it, it freaks them out. They get very emotional. So they love to hit stops, by the way, after squeezing longs or squeezing shorts to put people into margin troubles and or blow out people's accounts so let's meet our friends the lovely market makers there they are what a lovely bunch aren't they a pretty lot they're friendly guys as they stab you right in the back as they fight you over every last bit i'm telling you they do all right that's that's them now the dealers have a handbook to take your money away from the mt4 managers operation manual they can requote you at their will this used to be very very common not so much anymore, but used to see this all the time. Do you accept these new quotes? Uh, I mean, it, you would try. I remember years ago, I used to try and put trades in, and it would always be uh, requote, requote. You know, it was a royal pain in the butt. Market makers can trigger stops in a range. They actually have a very special platform, and they can type in stop out. They can type in what they want unlimited and they can hit that button and and hurt people at very key particular times as we're going through the slides you're gonna you're gonna see this they can change the spread at will they actually have a, a little slide and they can open the spread I'm gonna show you what that looks like right here they can open the spread and nail you on a stop now I'm telling you if they're gonna do it to you for half a lot or one lot and I swear to God they will you have no idea how much they want to burn your butt when you're long um let's see what was i i think i was short like 67 standards or something like that of pound yen 
I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I, I, I think I was short 67 standards of pound yen one time at a particular price. Something happened at 5 o'clock in the morning. A very, very bearish news event. Rocked pound yen down. I mean, it rocked it down. Okay, it turned around, it started to pop, and I started shorten, 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 shorten. And I hit something like 67 standards. I saw where the top was located. I put my spread like 15 pips. My stop loss was like 15 pips up. And I'm telling you, no chart anywhere, ever. I don't care who it was. No chart ever hit that high. But you know what they did? You can have a two pip spread, a five spread five pip spread okay like this the lower end of the spread will stay like that and they can open the spread wider than you could ever imagine this this i just wrote in here i just picked a random thing nine pips i'm telling you guys they can open it unlimited no joke i have seen it i have seen it before where the spread will open 30 pips just to capture somebody at the very top and the lower end of the spread will stay right there and they will rock it back down and by the way they stuck me with um oh i forget what the oh my god it was a couple of hundred thousand dollars i mean at the time i was, I was so i was so mad it was outrageous um market makers have Easy statistics on who is in margin troubles, by the way, uh, complete with the account logins and the levels. They will actually show you the logins, the levels, uh, not show it to you, they show it to themselves. Um, they manage risk against you. They manage risk against your positions. Okay, this is from the dealer handbook, by the way. And you can, uh, and I don't, this is a little foggy. I'm having a little trouble clear, uh, seeing it, but you can, you, um, you can see the deals. It's a massive amount of, of deals, okay, and huge summaries of dollars. And what they do is they try and get that to, um, what they do is they, they basically will trade against you. They know there's a lot of small traders out there, okay, and, and they're going to bundle up their trades. They, they manage your risk. They manage their risk. They bundle the trades together, all the little micros and all the little, um, you know, the, the point one zeros and the quarter lots and the half lots, they'll bundle this together until they have enough trades that they're going to sell this into the interbank market. They become net squared up so they don't have too much open float. And basically they're taking all the risk in house. Okay. But when it's too much for them, too much for their liquidity that they have available, they will dump it into the market, square positions against other really large orders. Now this takes a lot of time and it is wicked profitable for them. Take a look at what happened to the euro today. We saw the euro, we saw what it was doing, and it looked kind of long, um, you know, but it really wasn't moving much in the range. And then all of a sudden it started to break out, it started to go. And, you know, I have to tell you, I almost called the euro long today a couple of times, but for whatever reason I didn't do it, I, I didn't do it. And you can see what happened with the euro. It ran up and it hit three levels of, of pop on a 15 minute chart. I'll bet you they worked that thing all day long just to get however much money they made on that pair, on that one pair, okay? Once they did that, we saw that they held it up in the high for about 15 minutes or half an hour, and then they turn around and they drop it back down. You know they sold that to the inter interbank market and they got rid of it, all right? This takes a lot of time, but think about how much money it is for them, okay? So they have an account manager's desktop. Um, which slide am I on? I think I'm on, uh, let's see. Yeah, right there. Okay, slide 11. There we go. They have access to see everyone that is in margin trouble. They gun for their accounts. They are paid bonuses to stop out and blow out traders' accounts. Now, you may think that that's very evil and all that, but, you know, their henchmen tell them what to do and that's it, guys. It's part of their job. They don't really look at it that way. They don't see your face. They don't know you. They just see a number. And if they can gun for you, they will. They have a screen like this one up every single day, and they try hard to get the traders if they can. There's the manager thing. Please look at the login. Every account listed, whether it be, you know, whatever. Um, every country, they'll list the countries, Dubai, Tokyo, you name it. 
Uh, look over here, the margin calls. Okay, they, they'll have the levels set. All right, they can scroll through this. Uh, they're looking at the buy lots, right? How many buy lots? I mean, look at that, 1,041 buy lots on 70 deals. Look at this Euro Japan, uh, 126 deals, 82.7. So they will see exactly what's going on, and their whole job is to square this up and take as much money off of your table as they possibly can do. So how are we going to win against these people? We have to realize this is not a game. This is all-out financial war. It is absolute war. You saw what happened today in the trade room live. Look how many times I bid for a particular thing, and the prices came down. And the spread hit, but the other part of the spread did not. <laughs> they would not fill me. It happened like two or three times with gold. It happened a couple times with other pairs. And look what happened just a few moments ago with uh, the Euro yen. Okay, I know I'm getting a little bit off track, but we were right here. We bought it. That was my take profit for 15 pips. It came up and hit it and fell. And 15 pips turned into six immediately. As soon as I saw this pop, I got out for 9.9 .9 pips, and then it then it went higher. But I'm telling you, they will fight you over a pip. They are the meanest, rottenest creatures on earth. And I'm not lying about this. This is war. So they are basically lying in wait for you and me to make stupid moves, impulsive moves, especially gambling moves. Oh my God, they love gamblers, okay? They want us to risk too much and to tell them directly where our stops are. You tell them. You say, I'm willing to go long here. I'm willing to stop out here. I'm willing to short here, and I'm willing to stop out there. As soon as you put that information in, you have just given them ammunition, and all it takes is the, the littlest move, especially if you're putting your whole account on it. Some people are so crazy, they'll put everything in their whole account on it and say, well, I'm going to go short here and my stop is 10 pips. Listen, if they can square your position up with somebody else, they'll open the spread, nail your ass for 10 pips, lock you right out of the game, take hundreds and hundreds of dollars away for you, turn around and crash it right back down again. They have no heart. They don't care about you. They want the money. If they see three, four hundred bucks on the table and all it takes is opening the spread, they're going to do it. They'll do it. They'll nail you and they'll drop it. And you're sad and they're happy. They give each other high fives all day long. Okay? So don't tell them where your stops are or put your stops way above. Okay? Disaster stops 50 pips away, 100 pips away. We need to be more patient. We need to be more focused. Okay, I've already talked to you. I preached to you about this for days now. Patience, and focus, and discipline. No emotional gambling crazy stuff, all right? They want you to make stupid moves at the long time. You know what you're up against. You're up against the quants. You're up against the algos. You're up against the high-frequency traders. These guys are, are really ready to get you. Okay, so please, I, I can't tell you... Um, you know, hard enough how, how much you need to be patient and watch out. So let's talk about their traps, okay? They set these traps at the beginning of the week. It's very often right on a Sunday night or a Monday open. Sunday, nothing is real. You ever hear that song, Let Me Take You Down to Strawberry Fields Where Nothing Is Real? I think it was the Beatles that did that, <laughs> okay? Sunday night, Monday, nothing is real. This is just traps, all right? Another wonderful time to set traps is for the poor, ignorant people that don't understand what happens at the 4.30, 5 o'clock area. You have New York shutting down. You have rollover, swap payments occurring. I've seen people before at directly 5 o'clock, at directly 5 o'clock, say, Oh my God, what's happening to pound New Zealand? And, and the thing spikes like 25 pips, right? In one minute. There ain't nothing happened to pound New Zealand. Nothing at all. Okay, that was swap rollover time. They, they just hit somebody. They opened the spread, hit somebody, nabbed a whole bunch of money. They, nothing is real at that time. Do you know that there's no real market open at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock? There's nothing open. Wellington is not really an open, guys. Wellington, New Zealand doesn't even handle not even 10% of volume. There's nothing there. Okay? Until Tokyo opens up and Asia markets open up, that's a trap time. 
All right, so they'll set your traps right at Sunday, Monday. They set traps at the beginning of the day or the beginning of the session. And then they set traps at the end of the day. Almost every day. They can pull, you can see stuff pull off. They want to go right back into mid-range. Three o'clock, things will get sucked right back down or up. Uh, the end of the week is another place that they want to force a lot of traders to take trades over the weekend. They want you trapped and sweating. Why? Because they're going to gap the market. You know what they do? I'm telling you right now. They do a cost analysis going into the Sunday open, and they look at all the different stops, and they look at all the different positions, and if they can gap the market against somebody and get you to close your trade at the worst possible time and take your money, they will. So that's what you're seeing on a Sunday night when there's a gap. Sometimes there's a gap. And they'll run it up about 30 pips or 40 pips, right? And then they'll turn around, put in a 15-minute sell bar, zoom, right back down, fill the gap. Doesn't matter. Some Somebody was sleeping. Somebody was out having a cookout, having a great time, didn't even know. They come back in Monday morning. They're like, oh, crap. And they see their trade is gone at the worst possible time. Okay, it's like, it's like a license to steal. All right? Okay, so... Um, then you have, uh, by the way, this involves a lot of pulling away from the lows or pulling away from the tops, leaving people trapped. That is their very great desire. All right. So let's talk about a typical week move in one currency. Market makers can take something and they push it to the highs on a Sunday or a Monday, right? They will trick people to go long when a key level is broken. And then often there's a sharp pullback that will happen. Then the market goes into consolidation. Think about this. I'm going to show it to you on a chart in just a couple minutes. Sharp pullback will happen. Market goes sideways into a consolidation, but we know that that is a manipulation and accumulation mode. Then they can bust stop losses south, put a trend on for days, running to some great low somewhere between Wednesday and Friday. Right? It's always different. Can't say the market works on a three-day schedule. Right? Steve Morrow is wrong. <laughs> absolutely dead wrong the market doesn't work on no three-day schedule you're out of your mind the market can go four five seven days down there are so many different days that it can move it they are definitely not locked in to a three-day schedule that's wrong everybody would know it it would be so glaringly clear they always want you guessing that's why they'll change it some days they'll do it on a Wednesday reversal some days it'll be a Thursday some days it'll be a Friday the reversals don't always happen at the same time, and that's on purpose, okay? All right, so uh, it's different all the time. They mix it up. They never want you to know the exact day that they're going to pull off the lows or pull off the highs. And then they can pull sharply off the lows, right? And they'll go into a consolidation mode, and they'll close the week out. Now, we're going to see what that likes. That <laughs> We're going we're to see what that looks like in a minute. Market makers work in shifts. It is a job, right? Remember I told you there's about 7,000 people connected currently to the currency markets. The derivative markets have their own. The, sto uh, the stock markets have their own. Um, you know, the bond markets, they have their own. You know the cost already. It's $20 million a day they got to make. They make 40, 60 million a day. So it's, they have to pay their costs. They got to make triple their money every day. They have shifts. They got a lot of people. The market makers, the New York market makers, get their order books from London and they get their instructions on how to proceed for the day. These traders will attempt to make a ton of money and trap a good many traders and then they're going to pass the books to the Asia session. Now the Asia market makers, they only have one goal. They are going to accumulate to simply pass it off to the London traders. They're never supposed to run anything all that far. Darn, I have to cough. Hmm, bummer. Well, I don't know if you heard that or not, but had to clear the throat. Now, the London market makers are the best. They are the sharpest, brightest, savviest, those darn Britons. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. <laughs> no, but they are. They're, they're the best. They really are. They engage in heavy stops, and, and they engage in very heavy flows, and then they run trends. So you will see London, especially right around 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. It's always sometime after midnight for New York people. They're, they're long gone. They're asleep. 
one or two o'clock in the morning, three at the latest, they will run stops like mad, put a trend on and drop that thing or rise that thing, whatever the case may be, straight up into New York. All right, these guys work for the banking houses. They are the henchmen. Here's what a typical week can look like. Now, remember guys, I did these slides last night. Okay, so it's, it's a Tuesday slide that you're getting. It's not complete. Now, let's take a good look at it. Here's the Euro New Zealand, right? 15 minute chart, clearest way to see it. Here's your Friday high. There was a stop run. Here's your extra Friday high, right before the close. Okay, so you had a high made, they gave you a stop run, obviously they accumulated that. They pushed it back up to the Friday high again, right? And here it is, Sunday. You see these two lines here and here? This is our Sunday gap. Now watch what happened. They gap the market a little bit, stopping maybe a few small people out. They're still in accumulation mode. Stop again, accumulate. Here's your Sunday range. Now, look what happens on Monday. Big stop runs. But this is obviously inducing people to go long. Why? You're over Friday's high three times. You're over Sunday's whole range. Okay? So, yeah, they're definitely popping the market. And they're, they're inducing longs, breakout traders, and they're hitting all kinds of stop losses for anybody who's short. And, uh-oh, there was what I was talking about. The pull away fast and sharp and go into the accumulation mode. Bam, straight down. Wow. <clears throat> Pardon me. I don't know if you guys are hearing me clear my throat every once in a while, but when you try and talk for an hour straight, it's hard. All right. <clears throat> so here's your stop run. Two levels. Okay, two level of stops. Hit the stops, hit the stops, boom, pull away sharp. Go into a manipulation mode, right? Now you know anybody who took it long here, because they're breakout traders, right? Stupidest thing you ever want to do in your life. Oh, I'm a breakout trader. Yeah? <laughs> You're a poor one, too. There's your breakout. Bam. Where did they put their stops? Right under here. Hit the stops. Come back up. Hit the stops. Come back up. Here's your hook. You're hooking. You're, you're hooking back into the breakdown spot two times. Sharp traders are going to take notice of this. Sharp traders are going to be looking at their 15 minute and their one hour charts. Hit the stops, hit the stops, kiss the area, boom. Run a long trend all Monday, all Monday. Okay, crush every single person from Sunday. They're dead. They're just stone cold dead. Now, everybody who's trying to get long in here, what do you think happened there? Stops, sharp move back up, up they go. This is your accumulation. You see it? This is Monday going into Tuesday. There's your accumulation right there, your midnight candle. Wow, that, that coincides with the Asia traders, doesn't it? Okay, New York passes the books to Asia. Asia took control. Boom, profit release phase smack it back down time to reload we already taught this if you don't know what i'm talking about go back to go back to lesson number one guys remember you're human as humans you're going to forget 80 percent of everything that you ever learn in three to five days it's gone so a week from now go watch number one all over again a week from now go watch this number two all over again it's reload time profit release phase <laughs> reload mega profit release holy crap right back into the accumulation mode see it this is the typical way they do things now let's talk about the market maker moves also known as the one two three setup also known as the m shape or the w shape pattern i'll show you that in a few minutes all right market makers move the market in drives you can call them drives you can call them pushes whatever you want to call them you can't sit there and say it's all done in oh jeez forgot to stop the news guy so sorry okay you can't say that everything goes in three drives that is absolute bull 
things don't go in three drives. Sometimes they go in four drives. Sometimes they go in five drives. It's not a three-day thing. But they move the market in these drives or these pushes, whatever you want to call it. They force trends in three to four usually, sometimes five, and great pushes in one direction. This will eventually bring a corrective pattern of some type. And I just want you to keep that in your mind, some type. It can be a wedge. It can be a pennant or a flag or whatever you want to call it. You can call it an ascending wedge or a descending wedge or an ascending flag or a pennant. Uh, uh, you know, you can call it anything you want. It doesn't really matter the name of it. Okay. It, it doesn't matter whether it's rising or declining, but they do this. They, they also do head and shoulders too. Okay. And that can often be the exact thing you're looking for to reverse the market. I take high notice of these things. There, there will be a reversal of some sort. It's usually a two to four level drop or rise, whatever it may be, right? A correction of whatever happened before. So the one, two, three setup or the M or the W pattern is the most evident on the 15 minute charts. We should always be looking for this. This is something you should never stray away from. You want to know the closest thing to the holy grail of Forex market trading? This is it. 15 minute charts rule the market. Absolute rulership. Look for this, okay? Sometimes it is not just like a 1, 2, 3 or, or an M or a W. It can't always be that way, all right? It would be too obvious. So I'm going to show you another chart. We'll look at this next chart in one minute. Uh, this is a one-off move. Okay, and the other is going to be a head and shoulders pattern. Why did I pick it? Well, I picked it because it's not always a W or an M, and it doesn't always work the way you think it should. <laughs> All right, so look here on the euro pound, right? On Friday, this was resistance, wasn't it? And then we fell, fell back into the moving averages. Continued to grind, you know, Friday, and then we came up here. Just watch my cursor for now, guys. Here's your Sunday range. Now, there is a pop above Sunday range. Somebody might have stopped out there. Maybe, maybe not. It didn't break this level. So obviously there were no pendings that were hit. There were no pending breakout traders filled. But we know that this area used to be resistance. Fair enough. Okay. Here you have a drop going all day long Monday. Boom, boom, boom. Look at all the levels, right? One, two, three levels of drop, some consolidation, a fourth level of drop, right? In clearly seen, four, four levels. Here's a one-off move, a little bit of a trend line. Hit the stops right here, instantaneous reversal candle, right? 15 minute buy, whole bunch of sideways action, and kaboom, straight over, straight over this entire range right here and right here, straight over it. But notice, this is accumulation right here, okay? I believe this whole thing was accumulation here, here, and here. I see no reason for them to ever get out of any of it, okay? So when I look at that, I see almost a full day of accumulation. And it's pretty darn obvious that that was a major release of a major accumulation. You haven't seen anything like this in a long time. Better take a screenshot of this, okay? This is rare. This is powerful. And you don't see this often. That is an epic short squeeze. You want to know what a short squeeze is? Right there. Euro pound. Mother of all short squeezes, okay? Every single thing. I don't care if it was Euro odd, Euro New Zealand, you name it. It was the biggest short squeeze in a long time. Take a look at that move. One, two, three, four, five, six. My God, people, six monstrous levels of drive. How can you say it works in three levels? It doesn't. Okay, here's your left shoulder. Here's your head. Here's your right shoulder. All I can say, that's the release. This had to be accumulation right here. It had to be, without a shadow of a doubt, it was accumulation. Boom, up it goes. Now, at the time, you know, last night, I was thinking this was a reload for a short. 
and I was thinking the release would come here. But remember, I, I just snapped this chart last night on a Tuesday night. So I'm, you know, I'm not a soothsayer, and, and I'm not a trading god, and there's no way that I can tell all right, that that's exactly what was happening unless it's all over and then I saw it. But as you look at the euro pound today, you see even more of a squeeze up, all right? Even more. So it's not always the way you think it is. All right, so let's let's talk about a good market maker classic setup consisting of some parts. First, you have the accumulation phase, setting up of an initial high and an initial low. This this is usually seen very very well in in a um, uh, like like an Asia range. Okay, this will be seen very well in the Asia range, but there's other times that this happens. So then comes the stop hunt, which is a move against what the real intentions actually are. Then comes the move and the trend that can be slow and steady, or it could be very fast and furious. They're always going to mix this up. It can be somewhere between just a few hours, and it can be all the way up to 8 or 10 hours, but that is kind of rare. Pushing something 8 to 10 hours is a rarity. Towards the end of the day or towards the end of the session, there will be a pull-off of the high or the low, as the case may be. They will go right back into a slow, choppy consolidation uh, mode, and this is basically to wear you out. It is on purpose to drive traders mad, like when Chinese people make um, directions for American people and they're supposed to put together... Um, little kits that they buy. <laughs> they don't know how to spell stuff properly and, and you, you put the whole thing together. You just spent three hours on it and you put it together and you find out that there was actually one piece of the instructions that was left out. And now you have to tear it all apart again, rebuild it. Okay, it's it's done on purpose to drive you insane. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry, but that is kind of funny. So let's see what it looks like. Now I've got, I got some very sloppy artwork here. All right, I'm sorry. I, I'm not a good drawer. And so that I don't punish you like I did the other night, I pre-drew this, trying to make it look better so that you don't have to watch me try and draw this for five, ten minutes. Here's your fall. Let's say that Sunday was over here to my left, all right? And this is Monday. Here's your fall, okay? Here's your accumulation on a 15-minute chart. You'll see things bang around 15, 20, 25 pips, whatever. It's always different. Never going to let you know. They're never going to let you know. Uh, it, it'll always be a different range. Then you see how they opened the range just a little bit? Just open it a little bit, grab some pendings, swing them back down, stop everybody out. This this will happen happen often, and it may even happen twice, two times. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> so you may see a couple of these wild whippy movements. Uh, the reason for that is that they're trying to create confusion. They desperately want to create confusion and get people to do really stupid things. Then all of a sudden you see a boom, a nice up move, right? Picture this on a 15-minute chart. Really nice breakout, and then it falls back. What are you trying to do? They want to clear all the scalpers. They just want the scalpers gone. And anybody who doesn't know that they should be buying the re-kiss, the re-kiss, the pull... The pullback. We should be buying that pullback. You know it's going to move in multiple, multiple ways. Here's drive two, right? Now picture it on a 15-minute chart, guys. Three or four drives straight up with a little false 15-minute sell bars. They don't last. Maybe that's a 15-minute sell with one bar, <laughs> one lousy little tiny bar of follow-through, and then all of a sudden, knocks out the high. Okay, you don't want to take the first 15-minute sell. You don't want to take the second 15-minute sell. If you're going to take any of them, it better be the third or the fourth, all right? So just don't do that. A lot of times, these 15-minute sells with no follow-through is just simply a pullback in, in a trend that's igniting, an, an igniting trend. We need to buy the pullbacks to the river, buy the pullbacks, and hold on for dear life. Now, Pretend this is a couple of hours long, and you see some kind of an M-shaped pattern at the top, right? Sometimes the M can be a little bit higher at the top, or sometimes it can be a little bit lower at, at the, the second portion, right? That's what I'm trying to say, the second portion of the M. 
it's hard to talk so long. Um, it'll always be different so that you cannot really know. Then they will drop it down. Come up here and hook. This is the hook to kiss the breakdown spot. Down you go, second drive. Got some little buy signals here. Maybe it can even come up and kiss that spot. And, and, and you and me know this just simply as support and resistance, right? It used to be supportive and it's now resistance. And sometimes it'll pierce that resistance just a little tiny bit to scare you half to death. That's all it is. It's just trying to scare you and trying to shake you out, trying to get you emotional. Here comes your next level of drop, right? Let's say the end of the session is coming. It will pull off the session lows, go right back into consolidation, and attempt to close the day out this way. There's your end of New York, and you flow right into Asia session. This is what it look like. looks like. Let me stop for one second. Does anybody have um, any questions on this pattern right here? You guys kind of understand that. Maybe I'll answer this uh, a little bit more as, as we go through. We're going to see it in a minute uh, a little deeper. All right, so let's go to a live chart that has a very good pattern. I want you guys to see this. This is a 15 minute chart. Um, let me get my, oops, hold on one second. I gotta find my, uh, there we go. Let's go way back. Let me go way back, there we go. All right, so we're back into last Friday, right? Now, here's, here's CAD Swiss, and here is a pretty cool example, and you can, you can actually find this if you backtest this thing, and I don't, I don't care what currency it is, I don't care what chart it is, your homework, it should, your, you know, should you choose to accept this, is to go through your charts and look for these patterns, and you will see how often they happen and how often they are very, very different you can almost not find two that are the same. They'll have similarities, but there's not just two or three of them, okay? There can be a handful, like 10 different patterns easily, okay? Here is one that looks like a cursive or a double W. I'm going to change this for one second so that we, uh, let me do this. I'm going to get rid of the lines. One, two, three, four, boom. All right, where's my button? You see it now a little better when we go into a line chart. See how it looks like a W shape? But it's a little bit on the cursive-y uh, end, like a cursive W, okay? Swing low, swing high. Back down again. This is the one, two, three setup. Break the range top. Ignition bar. There's your ignition bar. Remember, we're, when we're talking about candles, you better pay very close attention to monstrous candles like that. A candle that screams like that is speaking so loudly to you and me. It is highly indicative of higher prices to come. No joke. Here's your first level rise. Now, we're on a 15-minute chart, so you know that this right here created a small hourly cell. The hourly cell did nothing, absolutely nothing. It simply pulled you back into the river and that's all it did. Here's your second level of rise, third, fourth level of rise. Look at all those days, okay? Here, I don't know if you can see this very well, but there's an M-shaped pattern right there. Sometimes it will come right up and come very near the top. Sometimes it will break the top a little bit. Sometimes it will double top. You cannot tell. It's always different on purpose, just so that you don't really capture it. They don't want you to to capture this, okay? Um, let, me, uh, let me do the line chart again. See it there? It's an M, an M-shape pattern. This is the market maker M-shape. It's a classic setup. It's, it's very classic. It's, it's a one, two, 
three formation. The Market Maker 123 classic M shape pattern. Okay? So um, now you see the M shape pattern. You see the drop. There's the sharp drop pulling away very, very fast. Here's the hook. Everything comes up. Retests, kisses. We, we call it the hook. We call it uh, kissing. We call it uh, validation, val validation of um, the breakdown spot. Just, you know, to retest it, you can call it a retest. All these terms are really ir irrelevant, what we're going to call the, the terminology, okay? But the thing that you and me are really looking for, as I've, as I've been trying to train you and, and show you this so far, is the entire concept of the pattern. There's the pattern. There's the candles. There's the hooking action. There's the moving average crossover. See it? There's the moving averages going straight, stinking down forever and ever and ever. Now you know you're in a downtrend. You've busted the 200 MA. You're going south, baby. You're going south. You're going downtown. Oh, yeah. Downtown in your classic Mercedes, okay? So here you can see this beautiful downward momentum. Right? Occasionally you'll get freaky stuff like this, little false breaks to the high, you know, trying to just trying to clear the board. Trying to clear the board, okay? Extra fall, that stops somebody out too. You know it does. The stops don't have to be gigantic, guys. They, they don't have to be the biggest stops in the face of God's earth. We're not talking about that. We're, if they're after harvesting even just one million dollars, they'll do it. If they can harvest 50,000, they'll do it. They're, they're, their job is, co is to collect money. They don't care how many stops are down here. All I can tell you is they want those stop losses. They want those stop losses. And here's an example where we, we just simply didn't go higher. Um, you know, that kind of amazes me, but just imagine what it would have looked like if... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit wrong. No, maybe I'm not. Hold on. Am I right on it? I'm right on it. Imagine what that would have looked like if it popped all the way up here. I mean, my God, of course people would have been stopped out up here and then slammed if it went back down again. That's their job. They're just doing their job. Don't hate them. I mean, we can hate them a little bit, but they are, well, yeah, we can hate them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do hate them. But at the same time, Without them, I'm lost. Without these market makers, I don't know how to make my 40% or my 30% a month. I don't know how to get my 20% a month. I can't get my 50% a month. I don't know how without them. I need them. So look at the fast move. Fast moves are unsustainable. You see that? That's ridiculous. When you have something super, super wicked sharp like that, that all happens in 15 minutes or one hour, I'm telling you right now, that's not a sustainable trend. There's no sustainability there. Okay? That's usually the end. It's over. In essence, on a five-minute chart, you would have seen it. There's actually a W-shaped pattern right here with a little pop. I don't have any problem scalping that. I'm fine with it. I could scalp that long if I was awake at that time. Um, so here's the end. And here's your upward move, right? Go back. Look at look it again. I'm just going to show you one more time. Think with me. Guys, if you're missing any of this, just capture it on the replay. Look here. What did they do? You know what this line is right here? The end. End of session. End of day. <laughs> right there. See what they did? sharp drop to nail everyone, accumulate the whole shebang, and run the trend to the end of the day. Right right back up. Stop people out. Drop them down. There we go. This happens over and over and over again forever. I'm telling you, the, the market maker business model is not hard to understand. 
it's hard to pinpoint with an unbelievable degree of accuracy, but we don't have to do that, okay? It's, it's really easy to understand this, and, it, and it's really easy over time to learn this. Here's your W shape pattern again. Bam, up we go. So I hope this is a help right here. Um, let's go through time. Let's go more through time. Let's go back, way back. Where are we now? Okay, we're getting much, much more fresh here. Here's another W pattern you can see. It's not always the same. It can't be. Everybody would know it by then. Sometimes they'll break the low. All right. Consolidation right back up again, right back up into the, see this line, end of session, see? More stops. Remember what I told you the other day? How, hold on, let me clear my throat. Turn on the air conditioner a little more before I uh, sweat to death. Okay, remember what I told you the other day, that traders are very often buying when they should actually be selling. They're very often selling when in reality they should be buying, okay? Contrarian traders are much better off than the people that want to claim, oh, I'm a breakout trader. If you're a breakout trader, you're, you are the king of whipsaws, all right? I can find a million breakouts that failed. And every once in a while, yeah, you might make money. Sure, there, there's some breakouts that can go up, you know, but I mean, it's, it's all about entry. I mean, it's all about entry and risk management. You better, you better get that right if you're going to be a breakout trader. You better get that really right because you're going to suffer an awful lot of stops. And um, so a lot of times people are, look, they're selling here. But the reality is, they should have been buying. It actually went up. Um, they're buying here. This is a breakout. You just went above an entire range. Think about it. I'm a breakout trader. Boom. Oh, where did you put your stop? Right there? Right underneath that low? Well, they just nailed your butt. I'm a breakout trader. Okay. <laughs> Where did you put your stop? 20 pips underneath there? L let me guess, let me guess. You put your stop 20, 20 pips underneath that low, right? You're a breakout trader. I mean, we just went above the 200 MA. You're long. Pow, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. Goodbye, your account's gone. Market makers just got it. See, this is the way they do things. They want your money. Think like a contrarian. I don't know why it's so hard for people to understand. I really just don't get it. The adage, we all say it, don't we? Buy low, sell high. Don't we say that? Well, then why are you not doing it? Buy low, sell high. Do what you say you believe in. Sell high. Wait until the market has some semblance of sanity. Come back to it and buy it back cheaper. How come you're not doing what you say you believe in? Don't, don't sit there and do these breakout things like this. This is stupidity, okay? That's stupid. Down we go, right? We're in a downtrend, moving average crossover. What are we supposed to do, okay? Sell that, buy that. And some of you are probably thinking, well, Mike, you're showing, you're, you're showing Cad Swissy. Yes, I am, and guess what? I'm long, why? I've already showed you why. <laughs> I've already showed you, man. Oh my gosh, you know, check it out. Hold on one minute. I mean, I don't want to get off, off track because we're trying to teach one thing. But look, seven days straight down, man. SNB move coming up. All right, there is. It's coming up. I'm long. I'm lightly long. I got this in mind. I got a pullback. I got that in mind. I got a pullback. I'm mapping it all out. I know where this is going. I have a full plan and not only that, I can see this thing one of these days going straight up through this, straight up. So I may be collecting small pieces and I may be on the wrong side at the moment, but I am not getting my butt kicked like a lot of people that go really, really, really big and they do things at the wrong time in total stupidity. You don't sell something when it's down seven days in a row and stochastics are, cro are crossing like that. You don't sell at 786 fibs and 886 fibs and almost 100% zones. 
I am buying low with the absolute intention of selling higher. I guarantee you. Let me clean all this up. Okay, in the bigger scheme of things. But what I'm trying to show you is the 15 minute moves. Okay, let me pull this aside for one moment. Uh, I think I might have one more thing left. Okay, so here's the conclusion, right? We want to be an extreme trader on the ends this is this is why we need to look for the end of the trend and the coming move it's got the biggest chances of success for us understand the the patterns are are not all cut and dry okay they're not always black and white it's not like there's just two or three patterns it can be sloppy it can be choppy it can be confusing but if we expect the moves and we hunt for the moves and if we look at the right times like the end of the week the beginning of the week the beginning and the end of sessions, right? And if we can anticipate the two to four pushes that we know are going to come with the M shape and the W shape patterns, and we stay on the right side of things, isn't, isn't that what it's all about, guys? We're looking for a really good trend move. We can do very, very well. So the market, after a big drop or after a big pop, the market will chop. It will consolidate. And when that consolidation happens, you and me should basically be getting out. Okay, that's basically time for us to exit. Now, um, let's see here. I've only been going for 55 minutes, so I have a little bit of time. And we could look at a couple of more charts if you guys want to, or um, actually I see there might be a question, so let me look at that. Um, Stuart, hello. Andrew, I know so many traders that say that you can't pick tops or bottoms. I do it all the time. I pick top, tops and bottoms all the time. Now, for some reason, I remember in my last trade room, which ended two years ago, but started four years ago, I had about a year and a half where I, I just seemed to be about the master of picking tops and bottoms. Sometimes I would pick them so fine that it was absolutely scary. Is there anybody here from my past trade room that can put a uh, put anything in the chat box here that can that can verify that? I had about a year and a half where it was ridiculously scary how I picked the tops and the bottoms. It was almost insane, all right, frightening. Um, but lately, okay, I'm not doing it all the time. I'm not really picking good tops and picking good bottoms. I'm in a little bit too soon and I'm out too soon but I'm still making money, all right? So Andrew says, I know so many traders that say that you can't pick tops or bottoms, but tops and bottoms fit into the market maker model. Yes, it is. It is their market maker model. It is a giant oscillator. You're absolutely right, especially with multiple confluences. You are right. You're absolutely right. And that's why I keep saying to you guys, it is like a trade scoring system. Do you see three levels of pop? Do you see four? Four levels of pop on a one hour chart. Four beautiful pushes. Do you see it hitting a 786 fib? Or maybe an 886 fib? Okay. Four levels of pop? That's score number one. Hitting a fib? Score number two. <laughs> Going into consolidation mode? And score number three, monstrous one hour sell bar, ignition bar, score number four. There are so many things. Did you hit a 200 MA? Score number five. Did you hit a, a fib confluence? Okay, there are so many things we look for. We're trying to put it all together because every little bit we got helps us. It's just like a ninja. You know, a ninja doesn't use just one thing. He doesn't go out there with just one sword. Right, he's got the black eggs. You know what the black eggs are, right? Anybody know what that is? Black eggs, they suck all the egg out of a, an eggshell. And then they hollow it out, right, the, the top. They pour in uh, cayenne pepper, sand, glass, powder, mix it all up, pour it into that egg, and tape it up. They paint them black so you can't see them at night. So the ninja has a couple of these black eggs in their hands. And when they want to kill their opponent or really blind them out bad if they're having trouble during a, a certain fight, you know, and all their Chinese stars aren't working, their ninchuk, nunchucks aren't working, they'll grab one of those black eggs right out of their pocket, squeeze it, they break it in their hand, 
and they throw that dust at their opponent's eyes. Pepper burns, glass scratches the eyeballs, the powder ruins them. Okay, so you learned a little ninja uh, <laughs> stuff right there. They're blinded, then they kill their opponent and get away, right? That's the way it works. Um, Donnie, you're saying, um, when do I know to switch my bias? When the charts are basically telling me so. I'm, I'm using everything I can to try and find, uh, to try and find that. Um, you can't pick tops or bottoms, and what is our percent gain? Our percent gain is something like 35% right now. Okay, just right now, but um, we're not we're not done. I, I still have open trades to contend with, and and the green must grow greener, and the red must shrink. So we really can't judge it yet. Let's let's judge it after 30 days. Okay, my guess is that after 30 days we will have cleared 35% lock stock and barrel solid okay 100 percent. I, I am almost positive we'll be there but my real hope is to actually do 50. I, i'd like to flatten the account 100 percent flat at the end of day 30 and i would i'd be very very happy to see a 50 percent gain so we'll, we'll see if i can make it and if we can all make it we're gonna try okay when do i switch the bias yeah and like i said it's when the charts when the charts tell you Okay, um, so let's go and look uh, one more example right now that I'm thinking of that happened today. And, and while we're on the subject, I'd like to... Oh, it doesn't really show up that well on the, um, on the 15, but it does show up on the 5. Okay, so there it is. The euro. We saw the three levels of pop, right? Here's level 1 with a pullback. Here's level two pop with a pullback. And there's your level three. Three levels of pop. See it? This helps to set up. Let me get rid of that arrow because I want us to be able to see it very clear. This helps to set up the market maker one, two, <laughs> three pattern. Double top, break the number, down you go, down you go. That's it. it. It was a short. I said it was a short. I took it short. I know I didn't take much money on it, but it's when I realized I had 14 open trades, I think. And and, I'm, and I only want to do 12. And so, you know, I just wanted to get rid of it because I, I didn't want to focus on, uh, I just didn't want to focus on 14 things. But nonetheless, it was a short. Okay, it went down, and here's the hook. It hooked right back in, dropped again. And lo and behold, we are in consolidation mode right now. This begins the market maker spread, the, the Asia spread, I'm sorry. The market maker Asia range is right here. Okay, now you watch, watch what happens. It's, um. It's four o'clock. Nothing is real again until seven or eight. It's going to go sideways. <laughs> it's going to go up and down and up and down and up and down. That's what it's going to do all stinking night. You're going to go into Asia. They're going to set some kind of a range. And God only knows where this thing will be tomorrow. I don't know. But the market makers will attempt to do a stop run. And then they will attempt to rocket higher, right past any stops that might be here, because they're just lying in wait. And I'm telling you, that's exactly where they are. Mark it down. 112.75. Stop ignition. You want to be a breakout trader, huh? Mark my words. Watch it right now, folks. I don't care if you're trading London tonight. I don't care what it is. Mark my words. You don't wait for it to break 112.74 to buy. Because you might be right for a few minutes as you come all the way up here and say, I've got 25 pips. And then cur splat right through the session lows. You'll cry. Don't be a breakout trader. Don't do this be a dip buyer 
and be a pop seller. Are the market makers making money off of the algos or mainly the retail traders? The retail traders don't use algos, okay? Uh, would, would the easier way to find a setup would be to watch the daily chart for 5 to 10 for 5 to 10 run in price. Well, daily charts dictate one thing to us according to our whole system which I've shown you before. The daily charts we always want to start with um, monthly, weekly, drop down to daily, and then we take everything else into consideration from you know daily to four hour to one hour, etc. But all of our moves are taken somewhere in the one, five, and fifteen minute charts. One, five, and fifteen minute. Okay, we're looking for pockets of movement. Pockets. I need those pockets. Um, and does the market maker model create opportunities for compounding into trends? Yes, yes it does, but you have to answer whether you think that you are the type of person that can handle such a thing. All right, let me think for a moment what might show us a good opportunity like that. Um, I guess it would be the Euro Canada, but this is very painful for me to look at because um, I was right and Boy, was I out too soon. I need to be taken out to the woodshed and spanked so bad. Somebody, please, when you meet me, just punch me in the face, okay? Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Here it is. I called it long. I called it long. I called it long. I kept saying long this sucker, long this sucker. It's nothing but a long. But I did tell you on those days that it was an intraday long bias. I didn't, I didn't mean to hold on to it forever. Now, look at the daily and what happened. I purchased this too soon. I went long in here and in here and I bought again and I bought again and I bought again. Now it was obvious that I bought too soon. It's very, very, very glaringly obvious. Okay, But the other part of it is, it's very obvious that I got out too soon. I sincerely suffered because I don't know why. I, 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 just, I just don't know the, the entire answer to that question. Okay. Fear? Scared? I don't know. I was in pain? I don't know. Okay? I called it long and said, we're probably going to go right there. And then I said, you know, that we would most likely go here, here. You guys know this. I know you know this because it's so fresh in your memory. You can't possibly say I didn't say this. I said it so many times. Um, I did not talk about this section over here because I said it was too long ago, but that we would go there, okay? Now, it turns out I'm right on every stinking bit of it, but I have missed one of the grandest, um, well, one, one of the grandest long squeezes of all time. They were squeezing the longs to death absolutely slaughtered them and then look at this move okay so the only way to compound into this move is to look here at the four hour chart and you almost have to detach yourself from all pain and all reality okay you're buying you're buying you're buying there's the four hour chart you're buying um, what do you have to do? You have to be able to get through this and yet manage to buy this thing on a pullback. Manage to buy that on a pullback. There's the breakout. You're going to buy there? Going to buy there? Got to buy there. Have to buy there. How do you do it? Okay. Eventually, I, I feel like I'm going to die. All right. But Yes, I mean, to answer your question, you're absolutely correct, Andrew, but um, you can compound into this trend 
but not every not every trend works just like this. You you don't see it very often. It is so legitimately rare to find a trend like this that your chances of finding one again in the next month are not really all that great. It's just not that great. And the thing is, you eventually have to, to, to determine where you're going to stop out. And if you were compounding on the four hour chart, then you, you really have to stick with it. Um, hold on one second. Delete for current symbol all. I'm going to have to stop this video in approximately seven minutes because we'll be over time. What do you do now? Do you put your stop there? Or do you put it under that candle? Okay. How much more room does it have? I, I don't know. I don't know how much more it's got. So though you can do this on a four hour chart, it's extremely complicated. I don't think that I can do that on a four hour chart. I think the only way that I could do it would be on a one hour chart. Um, and it, it would have to be another, you know, it would have to be another pair. So right now, let's talk about what I see coming on the pound dollar. All right. Pound dollar pullback to support, hit the fibs, hit the 55 period moving average, hit the original buy candle, hit the four hour 200 MA, big whomp and buy signal, stopped everybody out. Look what I see. This is what I see. You're not going to like it. None of you are going to like it. I see pound going to 135. Okay. There's our buy. Here's a really great extra bar follow through in a consolidation phase. The consolidation was just because of that. People had to bail out. The, the bag holders bailed. They said, screw this, I'm out. <laughs> They're gone. And then it just popped again. So the only way I can do this right now will be to wait for the stochastics to cross over, roll over, drop, and I have to buy. Then we have to wait for a pop, then we have to wait for a drop, then we just got to do this type of thing. How many hourly pushes can pound do before it hits 130, 135? I don't know. I'm not the market makers. I can't jump into the, the mass collective market mind and be a soothsayer and tell you that this is exactly how it's going to happen. It may not work like I've drawn it out. It might not, but I believe that this right here is going to come something like this. I don't know exactly how, but in some manner, I think we're heading for 135. Okay. So if you believed it too, which like I do, then you would be looking to somehow compound into this trend. But you've got to have the guts of steel, okay? I'd have to call you Iron Man. I'd have to call you Superman. So, Andrew, do you want me to call you Superman or Iron Man? Because that will be your nickname if you show me five days from now you're still long and you've compounded into this. You will forever go down in history of our trade group as Superman if you can hold it all the way to there, okay? Because that's power. I, I don't know that I can hold it like that, all right? I tend to want to, I want to bail. <coughs> Pardon me. When things pop, I want to bail. Then I want to buy. Then I want to bail out. Then I want to buy. And then when I see stuff like that, I want to get out. I see stuff like that, I want to buy it, buy it, buy it. Okay. I see something like this. I'm gone. I'm out of there. Okay. But I still love pound and I want it long. And if it comes back down here, I guarantee you I'm going to buy it again. Okay. Guaranteed. Not a shadow of a doubt. If it does that move, I'm in. <laughs> I'm long. Okay. Uh, guys, any other questions? I have to quit this video in about four minutes. Four minutes. Does anybody have any questions on the market maker um, stuff that we just covered? Please remember that you're going to, you're going to forget all this stuff. Every bit of it. In about five days, you will completely lose the whole thing. So you need to watch it again. This is all permanently recorded. Guys, I'm telling you right now, in two to three months, we will have finished every ounce of teaching. I will have revealed every single thing I know to you. And I did not charge you $10,000 because I had some people charge me 10 grand, other people, I mean, I bought more courses, books, videos, DVDs than you can imagine. 
I probably blew 20,000 on my education. Not just that, I have traded all the way up to 16 hours a day for, um, <clears throat> wow, uh, 16 years? <laughs> I think I got 16 years in there, okay? So believe me, it's, it's the knowledge, the experience. I'm trying to cut the learning curve. I want to give you everything. I want you sharp as a razor blade. I want you a bloodthirsty killer. You seen what we've done in this last week? Sometimes we're doing two, three hundred pips. Sometimes we're doing four and five hundred. The other day, what did we do? Six hundred and forty? You think I want that? You think that's my goal? Just sit here and do three, four, five hundred pips a day? Pfft, give me a break, man. I want you sharp as a tack so that you're helping me and I'm helping you and iron sharpeneth iron. And, and you, you read that in the Bible, iron sharpeneth iron, man. I want you so sharp. We're bloodthirsty killers. We're after 1,000 pip days, 1,500 pip days. Let's make it, <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and, and if the U.S. dollar collapses, we're going to need it. <laughs> we're going to, hello, uh, you're here to buy your gas today. Yes, I, I am. How, how much is my gas now? That'll be eleven ninety nine a gallon, sir. Oh, God. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to buy a quart of milk. Yeah, milk is nineteen ninety five a quart. I'll, I'll, I'm going to need my pips, okay? <laughs> I hope you get it. If there's if there's an all out collapse and they pull some hyperinflation stuff on us and we go the way of the Weimar Republic or Zimbabwe or something like that, we're going to need our millions. Trust me, we are really going to need our millions of dollars. I'm not I'm not kidding you. My yacht won't cost twenty million then. I'll have to pay fifty million. Half my entire wealth is going to have to go to buy that yacht. That's brutal, man. All right. Tom, okay, good. Steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron. That's right. Okay, I got to quit the video. Um, guys, any questions next week, tomorrow, the next day, whatever. I don't care when it is. Any questions on this that you don't understand, please, I'm here for you. Ask, ask. I want you so sharp. Let's do it. Send it in an email. Send it in a Skype. Ask me, and we'll, we'll get it all covered. We'll get it all covered. Bear with me for two or three more months and you're going to be there and your account will be tripled. <laughs> That's it. We're going to triple our accounts and get sharp as living razor blades. Okay. I'll stop it. All right. Nice.